Okay, for our next presentation, you know her and loved her from PowerPoint Karaoke, it's Christina with her presentation on Texas, an addictive piece of history. Thank you. So yes, taxis are making a comeback, and they are an addictive piece of history. Um, they are, in fact, sexy. Taxis are sexy. They are a really great portable project. They're a good way to use up your scraps. They're a great way to make both full quilt tops and embellishments. So they're, honestly, they've become one of my favorite hobbies, one of my favorite quilting mediums. So what is a hexi? It's English paper piecing where you make hexagon shapes um, sewing them onto a piece of cardstock. It is absolutely fail safe because you're sewing onto a template um, and it uses scraps and it's very addictive. It all began quilting in America with the Leverett Salt and Stall paper piece quilt, which was made in 1704 in America. It's one of the oldest piece quilts documented in US history. And it was made using paper piecing. However, it wasn't hexes. It was made, however, with scraps of clothing fabric from the 1700s, hopefully an outfit like that, most likely not. And it made it a sort of a sentimental memento, which is something people can still do when they make hexagon quilts, is you can cut up um, fabric from old shirts or old clothing. It made a comeback in the 1930s during the Great Depression, but ironically, not always as a scrap quilt. It was sold as a kit. Actually, it was quite expensive um, as grandmother's flower garden was marketed. So it's really easy. Um, you cut out your templates on a piece of cardstock, and again, it's fail safe. Your pieces will all come out the shape of that template. You pin it to the fabric, and then you just cut around with a quarter inch seam allowance, or whatever seam allowance you want, as we'll talk about it. You use just two straight pins, and your shapes come out perfectly. Um, and then you just run around it in a straight, straight stitch with a running stitch, sewing it around. You're not sewing through the paper, you're sewing around, and it comes out in that perfect shape. And then you just pull the pins out, but you don't pull the paper out. And that's why it holds its shape, and then you sew it together in these patterns where you've got sort of a flower shape with a center and a bunch of petals, and you can make big ones, little ones, and you can see they come out perfectly. You just whip stitch them together. I make coasters. I make um, doilies, table runners, and again, you don't have to do the full quilt that people used to make in the 18th century or 19th century or even during the Great Depression. It's a tiny project. I've made freeform doilies. You don't even have to stick to that flower shape that people used to make. I will put it together in whatever abstract shape I want to make modernist doilies. This is a Denise Schmidt um, fabric collection of primary colors. Um, this is a quilt from the 1930s that belongs to my friend Siobhan Ferguson. That is a dime. That is the size of hexagons that the maker used. There are people, you can get really, really fancy with your hexes, but wait, there's more. Yeah, you can make little tiny pieces, which is satisfying for some people. You can make huge ones. Obviously, the tinier they are, the more challenging the piece is. But you don't have to stick even with just simple hexagons. Um, this is a quilt, a reproduction of a quilt made by Jane Austen. She used diamond shapes. Um, it was still paper pieced, however. So once you get good at hexagons, that's the most comfortable shape to use. You can move into slightly more difficult um, shapes that have sharper turns like hexagons. I know, I can't believe it either. You can use any shape that can be formed into a mosaic. And you don't even necessarily need to have mosaics. Like I said, you can do individual motifs. Diamonds are very popular. Um, you can also fussy cut, which means you can do secondary patterns by cutting specific sections of the fabric, and I've done that. So if you've got a floral fabric, you can see what that maker made. She cut out the fabric so that it centers on those floral motifs. You can also further piece the hexagon, and this is getting really wild. Um, this is a piece by Matthew Boudreaux, who is on Instagram as Mr. Domestic. He pieced this out of denim and then made the hex seat. Now, I said you use a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're comfortable with that, you can do that. But let's say you're a beginning sewer, you're not so comfortable. You can go wild. Look at the seam allowances on that thing. Those aren't even seam allowances. Those are, you know, another piece. You also can, if you don't ever want to sew, 
if you just it's not your thing and you'd rather never so you can crochet hexagons you know african um, flower is a popular pattern you also don't even have to sew the hexagons to each other you can see that this is by dolly henry who is an australian quilter and she simply applicated the hexagons onto a nice piece of linen and embroidered around them i do sometimes use hexagons as an embellishment piece so hexes are as I hope you agree, sexy. They're a great way to use up scraps and a very addictive hobby. <laughs>